everyone, I'm Zach Peterson, and today I'm going to show you how to create a sub layout in Flux. Now, sub layouts are important objects in Flux. They are what make the platform unique, and they're what allow you to quickly reuse a portion of a PCB layout in multiple projects. So they're a real time saver. So if you're not familiar with how to create a sub layout, I'm going to show you in this video. Hop onto the Flux platform and follow along. So to create a sub layout, we first start in the schematic and we don't need to create a special schematic or anything like that. Um, if you look on my screen here, you will see that I've just uh, created a pretty generic schematic. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to do inside of this project in order to make it very clear that we're designing something that's intended to be used as a sub layout. So the first thing I've done is obviously with the project name, I've just named this new sub layout. And then the description, I've also named it just new sub layout. So the reason I've done this is because it's important to include sub layout in your project name and then in the description so that it's searchable. That way when someone is searching for this on the public library, they'll be able to see that this is indeed meant to be a sub layout. The next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to add a property. You're going to look up designator prefix and just click add and then type in sub layout. So that's going to ensure that when you uh, create this uh, PCB layout for this schematic and then you publish it to the public library, when that uh, new uh, sub layout is dragged into a new project, it will appear with sub layout as the designator prefix. The next thing that we need to do is start adding in terminals. So these terminals are what turn your PCB layout for this schematic into a sub layout and allow you to make connections to this, uh, to this set of circuitry uh, just like you would for other components. So when I start placing these terminals, um, these terminals are where you're actually going to make the copper connections in the PCB layout to other circuitry. So once I add these in, they will actually appear in the PCB layout. So you'll, you'll notice here in the schematic, I just added P1 and then right here, is that connection point for terminal P1. You can go through and do this for these other pins. Um, so just as an example, you know, I can drag this one here and then maybe we also need to make a connection over here onto this pin, just as an example. Um, and so let's just say for a moment we have three connections. You know, once we wire these up, these will also appear inside the PCB editor. And so you can see they have appeared here. Um, this one right here is P3. And then this one right here is P2. Once we're ready to start placing everything and we've completed the PCB layout for this, um, we can then place these connection points around the sub layout. And then that's going to define where other components will connect once this is used in a different project. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna complete this PCB layout real quick and then I'll show you where to place all of these terminals so that you can really easily make connections to other circuits. Now, I've got everything routed in this PCB layout, and um, you're probably now wondering, where do I put these little pads here for each of these uh, terminals? Well, what you can actually do is you can take this pad, and if you wanted to, you could move it right here on this pin. That's totally acceptable. So just as an example with this pad, so for P1, if I take this and move it right here onto R3, what that means is when I take this sub layout and put it into a new project, I'm going to have to make connections by routing a trace right here onto this pad on R3. Now if I want to reduce the size of this, all I need to do is go over here to the object specific rules, click edit, click add, go to size, add that rule, and then I can change that size to say 0.1 millimeters. And there you go, now you can't even see it. So this uh, little pin right here, P1, that's where we're gonna have to route into from external components once we use this sub layout in another project. So what about these two uh, pins here? Now you can see that these two pins on this connector, they're located uh, inside in this inner region of this connector. And in that case, what we might wanna do is instead of having the connector oriented like this, the way we have it now, what we could actually do is just take this connector and we can rotate it. If we just do a 180 degree turn here, 
We move this thing back here like this. Then what we can do is we can route uh, this connection straight in. We could maybe get this other connection over here to this pin with a via. And then we could move these two uh, pins over here like this. And we can put them directly onto these holes in this connector. And once we do that, we would want to do the same thing that we did before. So just once you place this pad, um, it's important to make sure that you add in the size rule here. So again, hit add, type in size, that'll grab the size rule, and then you can set a small size so that it's not clearly visible. 0 0.1 millimeters is totally fine. And then you would do the same thing with this pad. Just go ahead and add the size rule, and then put in something like 0 0.1 millimeters, and then it'll shrink down to where you can't see it anymore. And so that's basically it. Once we have this, uh, this layout complete, uh, we can then go ahead and publish it to the public library, and then it'll be searchable by other users. Once this is completed and it's searchable, someone can then drag it into their new project and they can start reusing it as they see fit. They can also grab this and they could clone it or fork it, and they can make their own version of this if you've enabled those settings. Now before you publish this, just make sure to go through and do a thorough review. This is important because, of course, we rotated J1 so that it was going to be easier to place these pins where we're going to make the connection to an external circuit on this outer set of holes here on the right side of, of the layout. Now, um, because we rotated uh, that particular connector, we would then maybe want to reroute these two uh, pins here in the central column so that um, we don't have a net error and so that we can uh, have the correct connections shown in the PCB layout. So it takes a little bit of planning ahead of time in order to properly place those connections so that this is going to be easy as possible to use in another project. But with a little bit of planning, you can have a very good high quality sub layout that's easy for other folks to access and use. So after taking a little bit of time to finish up this uh, sub layout, I've now got it all finished and you can see everything is placed and we've got ground pour in here and um, it's pretty much ready for publishing. So to publish to the library, just go up here to the top menu and then you can see right here, we have an option for publish to library. Now you'll notice here my description and the project name are a little generic. I would want to make this something that's a little uh, more detailed so that way it is searchable and so that way um, other people will be able to find it based on either function or some of the most important components that are in this sub layout. So you do want to make sure that you give it a good name and you give the project a good description. But after you do that you can publish it to the library then it will be searchable in the library right here on this side of the screen, and then other folks can use it in their projects. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure you follow along with all of our tutorials to learn the best practices for using the Flux platform. And of course, go sign up and follow along if you haven't already.